This video is to introduce integer exponents. We will begin with the idea of the zero exponent, where anything that is raised to the zero power is by definition equal to one. So three to the zero power is one. A negative number like negative 16 raised to the zero power is one. A fraction raised to the zero power, like two-sevenths to the zero, is one. And even a large number, like 352 raised to the zero power, is one. That's what a zero exponent does. Then we have negative exponents. The negative exponent forces the value to move to the other part of the fraction. So right now, this is over an invisible one, meaning it's in the numerator. The negative in the power is going to force it down into the denominator. So four to the negative two becomes one over four squared. Four squared, of course, is four times four, or 16, so it simplifies to one over 16. Try it again, three to the negative third power. The first thing is that the negative forces the 3 to the 3rd into the denominator, so it becomes 1 over 3 cubed. 3 to the 3rd power means what's 3 times 3 times 3 again, and that's 27, so it simplifies to the fraction 1 over 27. So then, what happens if your negative exponent is already in the denominator? Well, if it's already in the denominator, that means it needs to move up into the numerator. Remember, this is now over an invisible 1. So 1 over 2 raised to the negative 2 power becomes 2 squared, and 2 squared, of course, is 4. So let's see how we can apply this to actual problems. Let's simplify 2 to the negative 4th power. The first thing we want to notice is the negative. This is going to become 1 over 2 to the 4th power. Well, 2 to the 4th power means I need to multiply 2 by itself 4 times. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 again is 8, times 2 again is 16, which means this simplifies to the fraction 1 over 16. Look what happens when you do this with a negative value. Let's take negative 2 and raise it to the negative third power. So again, first we want to deal with the negative and the power. This is going to become the fraction 1 over negative 2 raised to the third power. Negative 2 to the third power means we need to take negative 2 times itself three times. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. That means that this simplifies to the fraction 1 over negative 8. And normally, we like to write the negative in the numerator. So most of your teachers will ask you to simplify that to be the fraction negative 1 8. Let's look what happens when we introduce variables. When we introduce variables to this kind of a problem, we can say something like evaluate x to the negative 1 for an x value of 3. Well, what that means is I want to first replace the x with a 3. So now I have 3 to the negative 1 power. Remember that the negative 1 is going to turn this into a fraction of 1 over 3 to the first power. And 3 to the first power is just 3, so this simplifies to the fraction 1 third. Let's try it with a larger negative exponent. So now let's evaluate x to the negative third for x equivalent to 2. So the first thing we're going to do is take the 2, plug it in for the x, and now I have 2 to the negative third power. This negative means I need to rewrite this as the fraction 1 over 2 to the third power. Remember that 2 to the third power means what's 2 times 2, times 2, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, so this becomes the fraction 1 8. So now, 
Let's simplify some problems. We want to simplify 3y to the negative 2 power. On this one, notice that the exponent is only on the y value. It's not affecting the 3. So the first thing we need to do is put the 3 on the numerator, and then this negative exponent is going to make the y squared go to the denominator. And then I ask myself, will that simplify any further? No, it won't, so I'm done. Do you notice the difference between the first problem and the second problem? This time I had a set of parentheses. That means that the negative 2 is actually affecting both of these terms. So this time I need to take care of both of them. Well, first of all, the negative means let's make this 1 over 3y squared. 3y squared means what's 3y times 3y? Well, 3 times 3 is 9 and y times y is y squared, so that means that this simplifies to the fraction 1 over 9y squared. Let's look at this third example. I have a to the 0, b squared, and c to the negative fourth. I have two things that I need to fix. This a to the 0 is the 0 exponent rule, and this c to the negative fourth is being affected by the negative exponent rule. Do you remember what anything raised to the zero power is? That's right, this becomes a 1. The b squared is going to remain the same for now. And then we need to look at that c to the negative fourth. Remember what the negative does to the c value? So this will become 1 b squared over c to the fourth power, which can also be written as just b squared over c to the fourth power. Most of your teachers will ask you not to write the 1 because we typically don't write 1 as a coefficient. I want you to try these nine problems as your formative assessment. Number 1 is 6 to the negative 2 power. Number 2 is 3 to the 0 power. Number 3 is negative 6 in parentheses raised to the 3rd power. Number 4 is negative 3 in parentheses raised to the negative 4 power. Then for the next set, you need to evaluate. For number 5, you have a to the negative 2nd power for a equal to positive 3. For number 6, I want you to try a raised to the negative 2 power for a equal to negative 3. Notice the difference between 5 and 6. On number 7, I've added a little extra algebra. I want you to do m minus 6 in parentheses raised to the negative 3rd power for m equal to 9. For number 8, I want a to the 3rd, b to the negative 2nd, c to the 3rd simplified so that there are no negative exponents. And on number 9, we have a to the 3rd, b to the negative 2nd, over c to the 3rd, d to the negative 4th. Again, I want you to simplify that one so that there are no negative exponents.